Hello everyone, my name is Ben, amateur call sign K0BJJ, and you're watching Spotter Jutting. First of all, other than telling you to like, share, and subscribe, or reminding you to, please ignore the animals playing in the background. <laughs> on today's episode, we are going to be working on the Near Vertical Incidence Skywave Antenna, or NVIS Antenna. This is an antenna which is basically a dipole set up about three feet off the ground. Hey everyone, Ben here on the selfie stick. I actually got done making those MVIS antennas. I have 15 meters through 80 meters done, all labeled. Um, I suppose I could let you pan over and take a look at the stack. I, I forgot to mention why you would need an MVIS antenna. This is meant for short distance communication on HF. So, here I'm Mark here to help me illustrate. What this is gonna do is it's gonna send the signal up, take a sharp angle, and then come back down. So if I needed to talk from Des Moines to Cedar Rapids, or Des Moines to Newton, Des Moines to DeSoto, it would be something that would work better for this. This is meant for short distance communication. I currently have issues hitting the surrounding quad state area. This kind of antenna <clears throat> would help me hit Missouri, Indi or Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, southern Minnesota. I can hit northern Minnesota pretty well. South Dakota and uh, Nebraska a lot easier. But this is a emergency setup antenna. You get it up real quick and it's meant for that get that signal to come up and then as back down as possible. So back to your video. Sorry for the interruption. So we are going to be working on cutting lengths to make that dipole. Now my center connector is one of these cheap little center connectors you can get off Amazon. I had to get the uh, BNC female or BNC attachment point there instead of taking it off. That's not primarily attached. Uh, I got another one kicking around here. Can't find it. Anyway, this little part is not, it's just, uh, it's a BNC style there. So that's my center connector onto a, I think it was a 90 cents cutting board, some holes drilled into it, and a piece of rope on top. So that's my center connector point for this project. You're also going to need. Some cheap speaker wire. I prefer the braided that's got the split in it. So that way you measure once, you cut twice, you have both your legs. Makes it pretty simple. Also, for this project, you will need, and I'm sorry, my table is an absolute mess. So I have them up here, just hiding. Some spade connectors. Or banana plugs. This is a banana plug style. So if you, you're comfortable doing banana plugs, you can do that. Uh, what I do is I unscrew the tops, put the spade connector in, and crank down on them. You're going to need your favorite soldering utensil, some solder. That's all you technically need, but you need to know your measurements also. And I've already done the hassle of calculating my measurements. Nope, that's backwards. So I'll just read you. I have measurements for 80, and that's to the frequency of 39, uh, 3970.970. That's the Iowa emergency traffic Iowa traffic and emergency net frequency. If we ever have to activate a statewide um, HF net, that's where that's going to be more than likely. So I'm tuning, I, I want this zeroed in on that frequency. Um, the rest of these are just to the center of the band, roughly to the center of the band. So that way we get the best band, band usage. So I can't tell you exactly where I, uh, what frequency I picked. I just tell you my measurements. 
but for 80 meters we're going to need a 58 foot 12 inch long um, leg and I'll show you how we get that here in quick. It's going to be a little windy outside so we might do a little music overlay for that. For 20 meters I'm going to need 16 feet 5 inches, 17 meters 12 foot 11 inches, 15 meters 10 foot 12 inches 12 meters 9 foot 5 inches 10 meters 8 foot 12 inches those are our measurements also a good tape measure is going to come in handy with us there's a wire cutter so I also have some masking tape and some permanent markers down here for the project but that's coming with labeling towards the tail end with that, I will see you outside, and we're going to get measuring, and we're going to get cutting. You're going to see a very fancy, high-tech way to measure this wire. I hope you're not too impressed. We'll stay tuned, and we'll get to it. All right, guys, first of all, I'm really uh, sorry for the uh, wind, but we're going to be using the stake here and the stake here, which are 10 feet apart to do these measurements. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to prep our spade, spade ends. And yes, if you didn't catch it when my measurements, I said for 80 meters, we're going to be doing 58 inches, or it's 58 feet, 12 inches. Yeah, it's 59 foot. Um, so I actually did 59 foot, one inch, so we had a little extra. We can always tune. It's easier to shorten than it is to length when building an antenna. So I'm going to get some more light in this. But we are going to prep our spade bits, and I use that with my nice soldering gun here. And I heat it up. I heat the uh, entire spade bit up. And that'll get this uh, plastic to twist right off. You can see my uh, board here's got some burn marks from doing this exact process. The reason why I do this is I want the solder, when I solder it, I, I solder it in good, and the uh, plastic will melt. So I take that, this garden, I'm gonna take one length of my 59 foot wire, split it, grab my strippers, Gauge, strip me off a piece. 18 gauge, strip me off a piece. So I have two bare ends. Gonna twist those nice and tight. The reason why I do this before the uh, I separate the wire completely and at times it cooperates better this happens not to be one of those times right. well it's on I had the blue Print, which is not rated for 18 gauge wire which is another reason why we're soldering it give it a little better connection otherwise these will pull out I do have another NVIS center connector that's made out of a piece of coax you don't know you don't need to uh, have a specified center connector. You just need a piece of coax. 
And the animals are going out again, I'll apologize. Get those crimped on good. Break out the soldering gun again. As you can see, I'm going right on the center connector. Or maybe you can't see this so well. I'm going right on that uh, crimped connector, not on the center connector. Gonna fuse this into one giant piece of sod or one piece of metal. Go on to the next one. Step after that is to split these wires. Take your scotch tape, drop a label on them. I'm guessing I should have wrote my frequency down, but there's our example. This is not with scotch tape, this is with uh, flagging tape, which I'm going to replace with scotch. So that's how you do this, guys. Pretty simple. Hook it to your center connector, get it tuned in, and there you go. With that, I'll get this tilted back my way. With that, thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll be bringing you back here in about a week for some ham and burgers. We'll explain uh, next week on spider jutting. Thanks for watching.